Hi there everyone. Well, it's Friday and uh, I'm back down the marina stretch at Barnwell. Um, I did have delusions of fishing a float somewhere else on the river today, but yesterday's rain put pay to that, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, I'm sure you've all had some rain. I mean, locally around here, we've had enough to bring the river up two feet, pretty much over overnight. So, um, we're back on the Barnwell stretch fishing the feeder. And uh, today, rather than concentrate on the session, I thought what I'd do is I'd share some of the uh, my thoughts on fishing the river when it's in this condition. And, uh, you know, there may be something in there that can uh, help you catch a few extra fish. OK, the first thing you need to consider, I think, when it's like this, is you actually need to think about the venue. And uh, I'm fortunate that I have a venue here that very rarely becomes unfishable. It's always a nice steady pace. Um, so that aspect of it I can normally negate by coming down here. But really you just need to look for somewhere that you can actually fish. There's no point fishing where it's banging through that hard that you can't present your bait or hold bottom or there's too much weed. So really do your homework, look for your venues and then within the venues look for certain pegs that might hold some slacker water, some slower water like deeper runs or behind fallen trees, such like, and just, just look for somewhere where you can actually fish. And then the second thing you've got to contend with is really the uh, the clarity of the water. I mean, at the minute, I can see about three or four inches into the water, maximum. So that says to me, fish are not going to be feeding much by sight uh, in the murk. So that kind of rules out a moving bait. Yes, you can catch you can catch it occasionally with the bait moving through, but by and large, you really want your bait anchored, whether that be on the pole with a flat float or something like that, pole feeder, or on the feeder like I am today. Uh, but you need your bait nailed to the floor, so they're the, they're the key, key considerations there. Uh, so moving on from that, really, you want to think about the bait you're using and the ground bait. I generally use fish meal based ground baits especially when it's coloured on the river. Just had a drop back then. Um, I think the increased smell and that helps fish home in on your bait. So definitely would recommend fish meal or very smelly types of ground bait against you know more cereal based mixes. Um, on the hook I think definitely worm, worm has got to be the, the top bait. I generally fish half a dendra tipped with maggot or pinky, or even a caster. That way I give myself a chance to catch most things that's in front of me. I mean I could easily fish a bigger bait, but then might miss the opportunity of catching one or two smaller fish. So, generally start off on a half a dendra, tipped with something, and cast approximately every five minutes. Next thing, really, you've got to have tackle to deal with where you're fishing. Um, so here, like I say, I'm fortunate, I'm managing to get away with 45 grams on the feeder, if I put a bow in the line. If I don't put a bow in the line, I can't hold bottom. So, it's not banging through, but there's a good steady flow out there that I need to deal with. So I've got the rod up in the air. When I cast out, I'm hitting the clip, holding it there, up in the air, until such time as the feeder hits the bottom. Then I'm lowering the rod down into the rest, and that two, two and a half feet of line gives me enough slack there to just form a bow, which just detects some of the pressure off the feeder. And... Uh, with the feeder today, I'm just fishing a straight running rig, but I've got it locked down with a float stop, so that it's acting as a bolt rig. So as soon as something hits that, hits against the feeder, tip just normally nods forward and springs back, and uh, a lot of the time they will hook themselves. Not always, but so that's what we're looking for today. I've got a small fish. Not sure. Not sure. Something on the end. No, 
it's a bit of a bit of a shell <laughs> never mind but yeah so we've had a few bites so far we'll have a talk about the ground bait mix I'm using in a minute I mean it's not it's not you know essentially you copy the same mix as me you can have what mix you want Okay, there's my hook bait, half a dendrobena, tipped with a maggot on a size 12, and uh, just loading up with chop worm and caster, micro pellets and odd, odd red maggot in the, in the mix. So there's a bit of everything going in there, so we can attract pretty much anything that's silly enough to come and take it. <laughs> Okay, just quickly uh, tell you about the ground bait I'm using today. It's a mix I've knocked up myself um, out of uh, three different products from the Evolve Baits range. Um, I've got a 50-50 mix of the Sweet Fish Meal Gold, which is exactly as it says. It's a sweet mix, with a little bit of fish meal in it, and it's a lovely golden colour. Great on its own, but today I just wanted something that would hold in the feeder a bit tight. So I've had a little bit of the river and drain, which is not the stickiest mix in the world, but it's a bit stickier than that one. And um, I've also added to it, to enhance the flavour and smell, some um, sardine and anchovy powder, fish meal powder. So what we've got is a pretty sweet, pretty pungent fish meal mix that's gone from a golden yellow colour to a lovely olive green. Um, it's definitely a colour I'm favouring at the minute and uh, having great success with so uh, sorry about that just, had a, just thought I had a bite it might have been a bit of debris hitting the line. So that's the ground bait mix anyway I'll just quickly show you it and there it is in all its glory. Um, to that, like I say, I'm just adding chop worm and castor and some micro pellets and a few red maggots. Nothing too elaborate in that at all.
Okay, rig for today is simplest in itself. It's just a basically straight running ledger rig, but I've stopped it off with a float stop to make it into a bolt rig so that with the bow in my line and the rod up in the air, I'm looking at drop bolts rather than uh, the tip hooping round. Just got that stopped against the start. Small, very short, twizzled boom there just to put a little bit of stiffness to keep um, the hook length away from the feeder. Quick change swivel, four pound hook length on a size 12 hook. And that's the rig. Rod's just a 10 foot feeder rod, which is perfect for this because it's only a short chuck over there. I'm fishing at about 16 metres today on this peg. Um, I'm actually fishing with a two ounce tip. Probably on the probably could fish it with a three ounce tip, but it doesn't matter because, like I say, we're looking for the bites to drop back rather than it to pull around. So, having that set in the tip's not really a hindrance fishing like this. But two ounce tip's not too bad, it's fine. So, just wait till it hit the bottom, then lower it, and that two, two metres of line just allows to form that bow. For the uh, for this setup to work properly. Any other thing you need in, in abundance is uh, patience. Okay, well that's it. I've had about three hours now. area. Um, it's been very slow from start to finish, but I've had a few bites, I've had a few fish. So, with the conditions, I'm not complaining. The water's come up, the flow's picked up. And it's not an easy, not an easy situation to deal with. But, like I say, we've had some fish, so that's good. Well, there you go, that's it. Had a few fish, one or two better ones, and uh, quite pleased to have actually had a few bites in such conditions. So, if you're following a few simple tips like I've given you, hopefully it'll help you catch a few more fish when you encounter conditions like this. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and cheers. See you later, bye.